Sage Wanderer here coming at you from my shotgun shack in the Texas Outback. This is a little bit of a proof of life video and also an update on my Texas Homestead project. Um, I want to apologize for not getting in contact and letting you know that I'm okay. Uh, I don't often go long t periods of time without making a video, but when I do, I typically try to post up something that lets you know I haven't been kidnapped by a... Uh, you know, leftists or anything. Um, now I'm back in Texas, so that's highly unlikely. <laughs> but I have a rather good excuse as to why I haven't made a video. And it's because I'm embroiled currently in one of the top crises of my life, one of the most devastating crises of my life. And it's um, it's been really tough. Now, it has to do with my son. What many of you don't know is that my son... Uh, has had uh, for many, many years a chronic condition that stems from uh, a childhood uh, traumatic birth. Uh, he spent the first 21 days of his life in intensive care. You'll be hearing about that as I tell the story in my autobiography, which is coming soon. <clears throat> but um, he has he's left with a chronic ailment, a chronic condition, that if he takes his medicine, he's functional. Um, he'll never be a hundred percent probably the medication gets him close now if you stop taking that medication and I, I can't really discuss with you what the condition is because it's his condition it's his private thing and I shouldn't be talking about other people's health challenges but this has greatly affected me and my ability to do anything really and um, I'm shocked that I can get anything done under the circumstances um, but what happened is that he's on this con he's on this medication that manages his condition and if he takes the medication he's mostly okay right but if he doesn't take the medication then he has all kinds of problems all kinds of symptomatic issues which basically make him pretty much non-functional i mean he can do basic things but he can't really accomplish anything and I won't get into more details other than this does affect his mind and his cognitive reasoning and his ability to um, to work, to cope, to function. And um, it gets increasingly difficult to, to manage him. It gets hard to manage him. When he's, uh, when he's not on his medication, he becomes completely dysfunctional. Now, he, he's been on medication uh, for five years. And we've had... You know, not a, not a major incident in five years. Now, I don't know why he stopped taking his medication right before we left Oregon, and I don't know why he left it behind. I think maybe he was hoping he could live without it or that he was cured because it's been so long since he's had any symptoms, right? He starts to think he doesn't need the medication. And so he didn't take it, and I noticed that something was off before we left, but I thought it was just that he wanted to get out of Oregon, that he just wanted to get gone and get away from that situation and get back to good old Texas. But by the time we got to Amarillo, he was completely dysfunctional and unable to drive any further. That's when I found out that he'd left without his medication. I had to make a series of phone calls and, and twist some things together to get... Well, we made it to Tucumcari, New Mexico, if you recall, the trip. And um, and then I had to go clear to Amarillo to get his medicine. So I had to couldn't leave him alone. I had to put him in the car, take him with me, drive to Amarillo, get his medication, come back, medicate him, and wait for two days for the medicine to kick in enough for him to become cognitive and functional enough to drive the rest of the trip and make it here to Texas. So we made it here, and uh, I guess that's been I'm not exactly sure now three weeks ago, and. Um, you know, we've just been, you know, the when you stop taking the medicine like that, it's a 50-50 chance whether you'll come back or not. That he could um, stop taking the medicine and get sick and then just be like that. Like the, the medicine may not pull him back. And, and there's a marginal chance that's, that, you know, there's an even greater chance that if he was, the medicine does bring him back, you know, and does fix him that... Um, he may never be as fixed as he was before, <laughs> you know, that he may have lost ground on this and have some permanent disabilities. Every time he goes off the medication, it's more and more, uh, it's less and less effective. That The way the medicine gets effective is it saturates your system and it stays in your system and you keep it in your system and the longer it's in your system, the more stabilized you become. And um, so, 
you know, things have been weird. Things have been extremely weird. Um, I've been worrying a lot. Um, he's still not thinking clearly. Um, sometimes he just leaves, and I don't know where he goes. And he drives, like he says, he's driving around thinking, you know, and then he comes back hours later. And <clears throat> so, and I have to take care of every element of him. I have to make him take a shower. Or I have to, uh, you know, when he's like this, I have to. I, have to, I don't have to force him to feed, thank, feed uh, to eat. I don't have to force him, force feed him. Thankfully, he does eat. <laughs> he never loses his appetite through this. Well, he does, but he hasn't. He, he like he didn't hardly eat. One of the things I knew was wrong is when I uh, I stopped in in New Mexico, and for some reason I went out to get something out of his car that I'd packed out there, and I'd realized that I'd seen that all of the food I'd been buying and giving him along that trip, he'd just been stuffing under the seat. So he had all of this food under the seat he hadn't eaten. But he got his appetite back once we got him back on his medication. And um, so he's, uh, at least I don't have to force him to eat, right? <laughs> keeping him fed, that's the struggle, you know, keeping him food on hand and, and keeping him fed. And uh, I have to, you know, manage his medicine. I have to make him, kind of make him go to sleep or tell him once bedtime and, you know, medicate him. And um, So, I guess some people are just destined to be caregivers. You know, when I came to Texas, I kind of breathed a sigh of relief because I'd been uh, helping run this care home, taking care of these four little old ladies for the last several years. And... Um, I was a bit relieved that I kind of could see a future where I wasn't for once in my life taking care of someone. But uh, now um, I'm starting to realize that to some degree or another I'm going to have to take care of my son for the rest of his life. That I'm going to always be a caregiver and I'm probably never going to get completely freed of it. I think that's one of the downsides of this of this crisis is that I have to, I have to swallow the fact that you know, my son's probably going to always have to have somebody help manage his condition. That he's never going to be completely independent. I'm not putting that curse on him. I hope that he can become completely independent. But I've lost, I've lost hope that that can happen without divine intervention. And so, I guess this is my, this is my, my job. It's taking care of him. You know, I've been taking care of him since he was little. You know, I'm about to get to the point in the story of my autobiography of his birth, where after he gets out of the hospital, he's home for a little bit. I mean, his mom runs away from home because she can't handle the pressure of having a baby. And she just leaves. And finally, she comes back uh, like a week later. And um, she just tells me, um, I can't do this. I can't take care of a baby. I can't be a stay-at-home mom. I have to. I'm going to go back to work, and you can either take care of him or we can have him raised in daycare. And I was very much opposed, but my kid in daycare, and you know, getting an hourly job where I pretty much am just working to pay for his daycare. That's like working a slave labor so that you can stay away from your own child. Uh, it makes no sense to me, so, you know, she said, I said, then he's not being raised in daycare, and then she shoves the baby at me and says, okay, then you take care of him. So that's what I've been doing ever since, I've been taking care of him, and I'm still taking care of him. Then I guess I'll probably always have to take care of him. I'm not sad for me, I don't. I'm sad for him. I wanted him to have a regular, normal life. And then now I wonder whether he can. And I'm just praying he'll get back to where he was so he can go back to work. You know, he was working. He was working part-time. And uh, I guess I had hopes for his music. This, this One of the things about this break, he came out the other side not wanting anything to do with music. He can't even stand to listen to it. And so I don't... <laughs> I'm not buying the studio right now, even though, thank you to my benefactor, there's a there's a person out there that keeps sending me large sums of money to help me along in this project, and it's the reason I have this house. I call this person my benefactor, and I, I apologize to my benefactor that I'm just not going to have, I'm not going to purchase a second house for him yet, because I don't, he doesn't need to be alone, like we, someone sent me money to purchase another shed house for studio, 
and uh, for studio slash room for my son. But now he doesn't want to do music, and I don't think he needs to be. We're crowded up in here in the house, but I'm not sure he needs to be having his own space right now until he's more stabilized. But um, yeah, so that's why I haven't made a video in a while. I've been, I've been going through this heartbreak, and I've been going through some tough times. But I gotta say, as I sit here watching two mockingbirds either fight or or go through some mating ritual they're just flying through the air going back and forth at each other i wish i had it on video it's beautiful it's like a sign from god it's two mockingbirds but as i sit out here in the peaceful uh joy of this piece of property i've got and i sit out here feeling so blessed on this in this cabin that you guys that you provided for me I mean, let's get real. Everybody's helped, but my benefactor is the one that paid for this. It's the viewer, you know. And um, I am blessed. I'm blessed. I'm glad I'm here. Um, I'm glad we're out of Oregon. Um, I think in Texas they can let you be a little, a little um, out there, <laughs> and they don't try to put you in the system. You know, we. We keep our we keep our disabled and, and off family members at home for the most part in Texas. You know, we take care of our own family. Where in Oregon, they're always trying to put you in some kind of home or in some kind of uh, government-ran uh, facility. And, um, but anyway, in spite of all of the struggles since I've been here, back here in Texas, I have managed to accomplish quite a few things. Um... I got my electricity hooked up. You guys kind of saw that gargantuan effort I took to get that happen and get that done. And that means I got my air conditioner installed. So I'm running air conditioning. And yay, I bought a little refrigerator. I bought a little mini fridge with a fridge and a little freezer on top. And so I don't have to buy ice. I don't have to spend $20 a week on ice or $30 a week on ice, something like that. And... Um, since the cafe closed over there, I lost my wash dishes in, in exchange for ice and hamburger gig. <laughs> Maybe I can make that deal with the new owners. Probably not. <laughs> I'm glad I still have a chuckle and I still have a laugh and I can still find humor in things. I'm tough. I'm tough. I'm really strong. As much as I cry, it seems like I'm weak, but a lot of times crying is like... A, it just vents the pressure, you know. But um, I'll, I'll handle this, and I have been handling it, and I've been getting a lot of stuff done. Like I permanently, oh, so just, just okay. I'm gonna transition away from the hard times and talk about the stuff I have managed to get done on the homestead since I've been here. So I got the electricity, the air conditioning, I got refrigerator hooked up. <clears throat> um, I managed to to install my 12 volt system permanently so i've installed it permanently and i'm uh, using that for all of my external lights so all of the outside lights porch lights and all that stuff lights going out to the outhouse all of that are um are 12 volt now and run off the solar power system and then i also have um i have purchased a 12 volt rv pump so let's talk about water i've been carrying water in seven gallon jugs keeping me fit I've got to say, I'm getting a little more squared away than I used to be in Oregon. Because <laughs> I'm, I'm hauling about, um, you know, seven gallons of water a day, I guess, to and from. And then when you're done using it, you gotta you got to dispose of the gray water, too. you got to recycle that, so you're hauling it again. You know, like dish water and, and uh, wash water and that sort of thing. Uh, you end up having to deal with the wastewater, too, so that's a good workout. But I, um, I'm planning on putting in a rain catchment system i gotta put gutters around the around the house into an off spout into a into a holding container and then i'm going to put a 12 volt i'm going to install a 12 volt pump which i already purchased um to pump the water through the house just like a water pumps through an rv on battery which will run off my uh, solar panels so my water system unlike everyone else that lives out here my my power my uh, water system will still be functional for me uh, in the event of a grid down scenario because I'll be able to produce my own electricity to pump my water through my house that I catch from the rain. Now I've done the math and I looked at the annual rainfall here in Parker County and I don't have quite enough 
to uh, you know to handle all of the water supplies for the house if I live like a regular person. But if I live like I'm living now and I don't really change things that much and I don't take four hour showers and I don't and I don't um, you know I continue to do my my laundry at the laundry mat and that sort of thing. And um, then I should be able to survive just fine on catchment, on rainwater catchment. And if I get to where I'm always out of water, I'm, I may look into doing a sandpoint well, a shallow well, with a hand pump or something like that. Uh, so, um, yeah, I mean, I just got, I got, I'm real happy that I got that 12 volt system. I'm going to expand on that because right now I'm charging my laptop on 12 volt. I'm charging my phone on laptop. I'm charging all my batteries and, and, uh, anything that's USB is getting charged by the, by the 12 volt, um, uh, solar panel system. And so really I'm just using the electricity for the air conditioner and the fridge. And so hopefully I'll have a, a very low electricity bill. And if the power ever goes out, that's all I got to have to deal with is dealing with, you know, uh, where I was before, air conditioning and, uh, and uh, refrigeration. And with a slightly bigger system, I could probably handle that as well. The air conditioner, you got to have a pretty stout system to run an air conditioner, even in a tiny home. And that's a lot of money. I've already got $800 in this solar panel system. So I don't want to spend much more. And this is, this is adequate. Um, in an emergency and it's a nice supplement so that I don't spend as much money on electricity and I'm gonna start using it as much as I can without taxing the system I'm still recharging the three batteries I have I've, I've been charging those for about four days that they were so depleted and I was just using more energy than I was providing to get them recharged and um, so yeah they've been charging three or four days and they're still not fully charged but once they're fully charged that's a pretty good backup system and um, I definitely won't really feel a power outage like other people would. <laughs> you know, I'll still have some power here no matter what. So that's kind of where I'm at. Um, I was going to go out this weekend and try to connect with a couple of bands and find a gig. I need a gig. I have to have an income. Um, <clears throat> that's probably the most... Uh, that's probably one of the most difficult things about my son's condition is that it may prevent me from being able to hold a job or work, which was part of the plan. I don't know. I've not received, other than the money I received from my benefactor in May, I haven't received any money really since that that first round of money. I haven't received any money in since early May. And so as far as from you viewers, I haven't. no one's been helping or supporting me. Um, I tried to get super, I have super chat set up, but with the new phone, I can't figure, it won't let me, it's like it makes me have to do settings and I can't figure out how to change the settings so that it will let me live stream. I have a phone that won't let me live stream now that I have super chat, chat set up. So I was going to do super chat so I can hopefully pick up a little help from you guys that way. My views are way down because we're being all being shadow banned. Uh, Google is, is uh, doubling down on the shadow banning and the censorship and, um, so, you know, uh, my car payment's not even really being made by advertisement from YouTube anymore. It's falling short uh, the last couple of months. So, any help you guys can do, that would be great. You can send any contributions you'd like to make to P.O. Box 2915, Weatherford, Texas, uh, 76086. That's, uh, and uh, make checks payable to Sage Wanderer. I don't mind asking for help because I'm kind of in a tight spot here. And um, I want to get a gig, and I think I could probably do gigs okay, because once I give him his medicine, he tends to be down for the night. So I could probably, you know, I could probably manage being gone at night on the weekends. We'll have to wait and see, you know. And the worst case scenario, I could just make him go with me. <laughs> he's like, you're going with me. I don't care. You can sit in the car. But, um, but I'm hoping that he's going to level out, and he'll be fine, and I won't have to stay home with him. But uh, as of right now... Um, yeah, I, I, like I said, I was going to go out this weekend and and talk to some people about a gig, and I just didn't feel comfortable being gone for long periods of time yet, uh, especially at night. And my main concern is he's just going to, you know, get in his car and take off somewhere and, and get in trouble with the, with the law or something because he can, depending on how long it's been since he took his medication, he can be somewhat incoherent. You know, he can be like hard to... You ask him a question, he'll just look at you like, why should I answer you? I don't have to answer you. <laughs> I don't have to talk to you. <laughs> um, anyway, I'm just afraid that he's going to get in trouble. 
But anyway, mostly I covet your prayers. Just knowing that I have this channel is keeping me going. If I didn't have this channel, I would be in such panic mode right now. Because I know that you guys can help me if you want to. If you if if you feel I need it, you'll help me. I know you'll help me. I feel like you guys will help me. I've been getting help, you know. My benefactor may be frustrated with me because he gave me money for this studio. But I don't... If I had it put out here right now... Um, uh, I would feel like he would just isolate himself in that building and, and I... And, I don't know. I don't think he needs to be isolated right now. I'm going to put I'm going to put a building out there at some point. <clears throat> and I also have to do some dirt work around here. I need to level a spot so he has a solid we have a solid foundation for the studio before I put it down. But um yeah, if I didn't have this channel, if I didn't have you people having my back, if I didn't have this uh right now, I'd be I'd be so upset. I mean, I'd be really distraught. I'd be I'd be worried that I could make it. And it's just nice knowing I have a safety net of friends here. And I have someone to talk to. That's the greatest thing. I have someone to talk to. I've been helping out my sister, too. I, I went out and wired up her RV. You know, she lost the uh, she lost the restaurant and the divorce. It's getting, it's getting, uh, it's also getting foreclosed upon. It's a big mess. And so she's been evicted. And she's got to be out of her house. So she's moving into an RV, doing the... Uh, doing the gypsy thing and moving into a caravan while she works on this other house that her boyfriend owns that's uh i don't even get into that house it they're gonna have to rip it down to the rafters it's it's been trashed so they're gonna live in the rv while they kind of work on that other house and try to move in there so um i've been helping her out too quite a bit as much as i can and it'd be, it's nice to have someone to talk to but it's hard to talk to my sister because her her drama right now is um is right up front you know she's still embroiled in the in this these divorce proceedings and the and the division of the property and the eviction and, and what she's going to do next and they don't have any money and she's gone back to work and uh but she can only get part-time hours and so i ain't the only one struggling so it's hard to i can't really tell her my problems because she's got too many of her own so it's nice to have you guys where i can just look in this camera and even though i know i mean technically i'm talking to myself i'm talking through this camera across the internet and to all of my viewers and the people i know that love me and have my back and have been praying for me and i ask that you continue to pray for me as this world hurls even uh hurdles even further into um the abyss of chaos one thing i can say is the world may be falling apart out there but out here on the texas homestead uh, it's just as peaceful as the first day of creation. So thank you guys for the time. Thanks for listening to me vent. And I just uh, covered your prayers. Any help you can help me with would be great. YouTube is not helping me, that is for sure. And um, being demonetized and shadow banned has uh, definitely affected my ability to make my payments on my car. So any help you can send my way. Any love and encouragement. I love those two. I love the letters. And I've got a really long letter that, so a guy wrote a book. I'm not going to name him. You know who you are. He wrote a book, and he sent me a copy of his book, and he sent me a letter that's almost as long as the book. <laughs> so I've got, that's the only letter that I've received recently. That was one box that was waiting for me when I came back. Thanks for that care package. I appreciate everything in there. And, um, but I haven't read your letter yet, because it's literally, I've, it's, uh, yeah, it's like a script, but I'll sit down and read it um, as soon as I get a moment. But I do love re reading the letters that you guys send me in the notes, and, and um, you know, I got some great gifts from you guys in the mail, everything from boots and shoes and shirts and hats to, to uh, you know, lights for my, for my uh, outdoor area, you know, solar lights and stuff, and shoes and tools and food and <laughs> thank you guys for helping me out i truly do love y'all and um, i hope the best for everyone and just keep us in your prayers and we'll talk to you later thanks for listening